Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in today's video we're going to be looking at how we calculate the slope of a beam and the deflection of a beam as a result of various different loading conditions. So what we have pictured here is a simply supported beam and the simply supported beam is made from a material with an elastic modulus of 190 gigapascals as indicated in the top right hand corner. The overall length of the beam is 5 meters and the cross section of the beam can be seen there with an outside width of 60 millimeters and an inside width of 40 millimeters and an outside depth of 80 millimeters and an inside depth of 60 millimeters. So in effect we have a rectangular hollow section 60 millimeters by 80 millimeters but with a 10 millimeter wall thickness. Now the beam that we have pictured there is being subjected to two loads the first load that it's being subjected to is a 1.05 kilonewton point load and that's being applied at the centre of the beam. We then have a uniform distributed load that spans the length of the beam and that has a weight per metre of 110 newtons. So the uniform distributed load there is 110 newtons per metre of length. Now what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be calculating the slope and the deflection of that beam. And I've colour coded this because what we're going to do is something called the superposition method. Now, if you can imagine, each of these two loads, the point load P and the uniform distributed load W, are going to cause this beam to bend. And as this beam bends, we're going to see a deflection or we're going to see a change in shape. Now, if we were to treat each of these forces in isolation, then the slope of the beam resulting from the point load would be PL squared over 16EI, shown here. And the deflection of the beam, just from that point load, would be PL cubed over 48EI. Now, if we were to remove the point load and only apply the UDL, then the slope at the end of the beam here, given as an angle theta in radians, would be found using WL cubed over 24EI. And the maximum deflection at the centre of the beam, noting that the beam is going to take on this kind of shape here, would be 5WL to the fourth over 384EI. Now each of these terms that I'm using at the bottom here, indicated in blue and red, can actually be found through quite a complex process of integration. Basically, if we were to derive an equation for the bending moment acting on this beam, then the first integral would give us our slope, and then if we integrated for a second time, that would give us our deflection. We would need to specify various different boundary conditions in order to derive these two equations, but the principle behind these is that the slope is the first integral and the deflection is the second integral of the equation for the bending moment. That said, each of these expressions here can actually be found on standard tables. So all we've done here is we've extracted the relevant expressions from those tables and we're going to use them here along with the superposition method in order to calculate the total slope and the total deflection on this beam resulting from those two loads. Okay, referring to each of those expressions and each of those equations in the bottom left hand corner, we can see that the loads P and W are known. We know that the length of the beam is 5 meters and we know that the elastic modulus is 190 gigapascals. What we don't yet know is the second moment of area I. So the first thing we need to do then is calculate I, the second moment of area for our beam. And we have the formula there, BD cubed for the outside minus BD cubed for the inside over 12. So let's calculate that now. We have I equals B for the outside, and we need to work in meters so that we know our final answer is going to be in SI units or meters to the fourth in this case. B is the width, D is the depth. So we have the outside width times the outside depth cubed. Now from that we're going to subtract the inside width 0.04 times the inside depth in metres 0.06. That again is cubed and we're dividing all of that by 12 giving us a second moment of area for our rectangular hollow section B equal to 1.84 times 10 to the minus 6 and that's metres to the fourth. We worked in SI units so our answer is in SI units. 
Okay, so now we can move on to our slope calculation and our deflection calculation. And all we need to do here is begin inputting our numbers. So for our slope calculation, working with our point load first of all, we have a force of 1.05 kilonewtons. Well, we're going to work in SI units once again, and that will give us our answer in SI units, and the SI unit of an angle is radians. So we have 1050 times the length squared. Well, we've said the length of the beam is 5 meters. And we're dividing that by 16 times our elastic modulus of 190. But note that that's gigapascals, so times 10 to the 9, times our elastic modulus of 1.84 times 10 to the minus 6. I'm going to put each of those standard form numbers into brackets, just as a reminder that they're in standard form. And we need to take care here because it's all of the top divided by all of the bottom, like so. Now to that, we need to add W. Well, W we've said is 110. Note this time that it's L cubed, so times 5 cubed. And on the bottom there, we have 24 EI. So 24 times 190, 10 to the 9, times 1.84, 10 to the minus 6. And once again, just a reminder that it's all of the top divided by all of the bottom there. Okay, so running that through the calculator is going to give us the maximum slope, and the maximum slope occurs at either end of the beam there. Note that the slope in the center with our UDL and our central point load is going to be zero. We're basically going to be having a flattening out at the center there. But the maximum slope at either end of the beam, theta equals 6.332, times 10 to the minus 3 radians. And that's accurate to four significant figures. Okay, so now let's repeat for our maximum deflection. And once again, our maximum deflection there is going to occur at the center of the beam, where the deviation from the original position is maximum. And once again, we're plugging in our values. We have P1050 times L cubed, so times 5 cubed. And it's all of that divided by 48 EI, so 48 times 190, 10 to the 9, times 1.84, 10 to the minus 6. That would give us the deflection due to the point low, but we also need to add on the deflection due to the UDL. Now the deflection due to the UDL then is 5 times W, 110, times L to the 4th, 5 to the power of 4. And on the bottom this time, we have 384 times our elastic modulus of 190, 10 to the 9 times our second moment of area, 1.84 times 10 to the minus 6. Now once again, it's all of the top divided by all of the bottom. So you need to take quite a lot of care when you input this into your calculator. But running that all through the calculator gives us a maximum deflection at the center of the beam equal to 0.0, .0 now note that because we've worked in SI units there, that answer is going to be in meters. So what I'm going to do is times that by a thousand to give me a deflection in millimeters equal to 10.4 millimeters accurate to the nearest one decimal place. Okay, so what we've seen here is when the force of 1050 newtons is applied to the center of our B, along with a UDL of 110 newtons per meter being applied, the resulting slope at either end of the beam 
is 6.332 times 10 to the minus 3 radians, and the resulting deflection at the centre is 10.4 millimetres. Note that each of the calculations that we've done there are for maximum slope and for maximum deflection. In the next video, we're going to use the same loading conditions and the same length of beam, but what we're going to do is we're going to specify a maximum allowable deflection, and from there, we're going to determine the second moment of area of our required beam, and then we're actually going to select an I-section beam that will keep us within that maximum allowable deflection.